for Wednesday, April 20th, uh, 2022. The uh, first piece of new business, EPC uh, 08, 2022, 89 Old Kings Highway South, F Gang and M Lanza to construct certain replacement storm drainage improvements in and within close proximity to the wetlands and watercourses. The property lies on the south side of Old Kings Highway South, approximately 325 feet east of Waring Lane, and is identified as map number 63, lot number 79. Zone R dash one half and is approximately uh, 0 0.937 acres. Rick? Um, this item is on the agenda this evening uh, for an acknowledgement of the receipt of that, of that of this particular application. It is a uh, an application in which um, the applicant is proposing to improve certain storm drainage that is on his property, suffers a great deal of flooding, is, uh, is situated in the low point along the edge of the road, um, a great deal of surface water uh, affecting both the driveway, his dwelling, and portions of the property. Um, he's hired a professional engineer to develop a plan that was is including um, uh, new, new improved uh, large storm drains and uh, better collection structures, a better configuration of collection structures. Um, staff has inspected the site and has developed a list of information. There's no action necessary this evening, um, but there has been a list of a, a list of extensive list of information provided by uh, EPC staff and DPW staff. And, uh, anything that comes before the board in the subsequent months is a uh, is um, a sound project and uh, will not result in adverse impacts upon the regular areas or adjoining properties. <coughs> okay, so we're here to acknowledge receipt tonight. Uh, do we need a vote on that? No. No, we're just starting the statutory time. Okay, okay, so the clock starts. Okay, the next item of business is EPC 09 2022 8 Holly Lane, J Gannon and H Hugh to construct a wooden deck approximate to wetlands. And water courses. The property lies on the west Air. side of Holly Lane. Yes. You want to take comments though on that uh, on that site, so oh, we can. Uh, uh, please let's go back to let's the well. Sorry. This no, no, my friend. Um, my no, we'll, I know. We'll go, okay. to, <laughs> uh, we'll go back to zero eight twenty twenty two. Uh, Bill, as a commission member, would you like to speak? Yes, uh, I just have a request that. Uh, because there's a very steep grade there, and it's all grass surrounding that uh, catch pool area and the one uh, lawn drain that they uh, put a densely uh, buffer zone around that to try to catch some of that fertilizer before it goes downstream into the wetlands and then eventually down to Goodwise River, I believe. You see what I'm following there? It's, it's a small little no, section. No, no, no. It's like a U. If you put a U around that one section that's open, ditch, and the catch pool, that'll, you know, should be able to stop some of the, because it's a steep train and everything, any fertilizer is going to come rolling in there. It's my pet peeve, you know that. So uh, if they could do that, that'd be great. And there's also one other um, lawn drain. And if they could do something around that and similar, that would be great. Those are my only comments. And a similar comment. Is uh, is there an, another commissioner that would like to speak on this one? I, I would like to say something. Um, I actually stopped by that property earlier today just to take a look at it. And the homeowner told me that uh, they are actually not doing what is proposed in, in these documents, that they are focusing only on the front yard and he called his um, uh, the 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 person who has designed this to confirm that. But I just wanted to report that uh, the homeowner does not think that this application is going forward. Well, they have not withdrawn it. They have not modified it. They have not responded, as far as I know, <clears throat> is that they will be moving forward with it. And if they determine not to. Will be the second for now. <laughs> well, well, they can always withdraw it. Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't be the first time somebody's withdrawn something, but interesting to hear. Interesting to hear that, Carolyn. So, 
when I guess when I guess there's further communication, if if they want to withdraw it, you know, so be it. Is there another commissioner that would like to speak? Okay, then let's move on to uh, EPC 09 2022 8 Holly Lane, Jay Gannon and HU to construct a wood deck proximate to wetlands and watercourses. The property line uh, lies along the west side of Holly Lane, approximately 575 feet north of Middlesex Road and is identified as map number nine on lot number 149. Uh, it's an R1 zone and it's approximately 1.21 acres. Rick? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the um, this application, just as a matter of background, the, the commission had previously approved a permit for this property to do certain additions and uh, drainage and um, associated grading. Um, and they are moving forward with that work. And in fact, they are doing things such as renovating the home, but also they elevated the, the basement to, to uh, to, to treat a, a stormwater drainage and groundwater uh, issue associated with the dwelling. There had been a, a covered porch at the rear of the property. As part of the prior approval, it was to be demolished. The, um, the owner has now determined that they would like to install a wood deck in the same location as um, the, the prior covered porch. So they filed a new application to construct uh, that and um, Staff is, is in the midst of reviewing the application, developing a list of information, and um, we'll be getting back to you in, in a subsequent month if, uh, as we move forward. Okay, uh, uh, does any commission member have additional questions or comments? Yeah, but I don't need don't, to refer. All right. You, don't disappoint me, Bill. All right, well, let me clarify. Maybe you can clarify this for me. Because it was approved once, but now they're coming back for something else, doesn't that open it up so we can they take a look from an environmental perspective what's being done there? Because I don't see anything that they were doing. Maybe it's maybe it's in past records that weren't submitted. But um, I, I think my thought is that once they come back for something new, you know, we get to look at the whole property again and uh, determine whether that it's correct. It, from an EPC method. I mean, if something was 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 seriously um, uh, problematic, yes, I would not go back and undo something that was previously endorsed by the commission. <clears throat> but if there's something that's linked to the specific element they're asking for, such as um, plantings and those kinds of things in in the spaces um, that you see fit, I think that's there's certainly we can do that. I think uh, I, I think there's a precedent for that that says if they promised to plant, if they submitted a planting plan with a prior application, and that and that planting plan has not been completed, okay, has or has been in, or has not been has not been completed according to what was agreed to, then we can use that in this application to say, hey, no, you have to, um, you know, the agreement was in the prior application you do this, you haven't, so therefore. You know what? Uh, what do we need to do to make sure that you abide by your side of the agreement? Okay. So Rick, what is that? So we're going to look at the specific impacts associated with under this new application mm -hmm. associated with the deck. Yep. The other impacts were evaluated under the the prior permit. Yep. Okay. Uh, and I somewhat agree to that, except if it was done poorly the first time, and we see things that should be should be handled you know I, I i it's silly just to ignore that myself but anyway did mm -hmm. they did they provide a planning schedule for the uh during last time rick the the prior had called out what uh, okay they called out an area that was to be planted under the with the the prior reviewer um, all right so under this, the reason I'm under, this one, under this one i've asked for a, a detailed planting schedule for uh, okay. our review because the reason I even bothering this one, it's a tremendously viable wetland and water course. This is not just your, you know, half you know, kind of a ruddy one. It's it's beautiful. It's got tons of wetlands surrounding it in the back. It's got a beautiful water course. And, you know, we should protect that. 
and I'm concerned that uh, mm -hmm. you know, we should put a buffer zone all on that on that water course. And because there's no markers showing where the property line is, it's probably on both sides of that water course because the north side is lawn that looks like it's the neighbors, but there's no markers that they they on the south side they had markers everywhere showing us the borderline. They did not on the north side. The north so side it didn't give us a good handle about what what yeah, we're even looking at. It. Well, you don't, I don't think you even have, well, I guess you do have a plan, but the north side is the property owners, um, um, the adjoining property owners. The, the north know, side of that water and course? I, and, I've, and I have asked for a very detailed planting plan for that water course edge. Well, the survey does not show that that's the owners, uh, that that's the adjacent owners. That's theirs. The one that you sent to us. Pull it out and you'll see that there's a big section there that is, on the uh, north side that is on the applicant's property. And I, I try to walk it out and I and there's uh, you know a section of lawn, I believe, that looks like it's the neighbors well, over the there. Area, the area to immediately to the north. Anyway, uh, I, 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 I think to the east is the abutters property. We can take a look in the back too. I see well, what you're saying. Just go to the north and uh, you'll see there's a bunch of lawn there and it looks like it's the neighbor's lawn, but it's their lawn. In any case, uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful section. North, we, the north of where the, where the dwelling is. That's the abutters property. Now our formerly of Dale. <clears throat> yeah. Back, so I'll certainly take a look in the back there. Yeah, I'm talking about on the north side of that water course that is on the applicant's property. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to, not trying to be a pain in the butt here, but you know, it's a beautiful water course. It goes right into Stony Brook. And uh, you know, that's our job is to try to protect this stuff. And if it wasn't yep. done right the first time, we need to do it better this time. Uh, my other comment to that is the plan they sent us, uh, there isn't, there's no eight Holly Lane on it whatsoever. So I don't understand how uh, Seymour does that, but. You know, you got a secret survey and you can't tell us even what property number it is. I looked all over it. I can't find eight anywhere on there. Minor detail, but um, something that we ought to have for the record correctly. I think. Yep. And the other item is in the backyard. We, they should give up some of that, uh, some of that grass area. It's totally soaked. It's all uh, you know, swamp maples and, and bring it back up to the two boulders at minimally and give some of that back. So that's my piece. Thanks. Okay. Is there another commissioner that would like to speak? Okay. Moving on, uh, the next piece is old business, EPC 42-2021, 175 Brookside Road, 175 Brookside LLC to grade and construct a driveway, uh, parking court, drainage, and related features within a designated upland review area. These activities are linked to a single family dwelling associated with a uh, pending two lot subdivision of the property. This, uh, the parcel lies along the west side of Brookside Road, just north of Stonewall Lane, and is identified as map number five, lot number 13. The zone is R2 and the site is approximately 4.5387 acres. I believe the commission members have received uh, a draft okay and uh, i guess there's two things we should we should comment on here one is i think it's technically feasible to of to do the subdivision i don't think there's i don't think that's i mean we've looked at it a couple of times before and i think that it's technically feasible to subdivise it to, to uh, for sub mr mr chairman apologies for the interruption and just as yeah. a point of order uh I believe Commissioner Millard has uh, recused himself from this. Uh, That's correct. Season. That's correct. Uh, for the record, uh, Jim Millard is, is recused. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, so uh, this, the question is whether this specific uh, subdivision is is uh, technically feasible. And then, and then have we, uh, I think we've examined prudent, uh, the prudent and feasible alternatives in this one. And it, uh, this, this, seems, this seems to be now. Um, the members have received a draft 
of this and um, I'd like to go through with the commission members um, it's, it's a long it's seven pages long so you know what do you guys what do you guys think of this Bill you want to kick it off yeah I'm okay you okay yep Carolyn Uh, yes, I mean, I, I really like um, under the decision the um, requirement to, um, to, to allow the wet meadow um, and uh, to uh, reduce and eliminate the manicured lawn and reestablish uh, the wet meadow and, and all the wetland area um, to, to make the channel more stable, um, to remove the, the top rocks from it. And I I think that reduces the necessity and the frequency frequency of uh, drainage maintenance on the part of the homeowner, and also the temptation to um, to, to restore it to lawn. Um, I, mm -hmm. I I really like that. I I, I wholeheartedly uh, approve of this recommendation. Thank you, Lauren. Um. Yeah, I saw in one of the other um, applications actually that there was a tracking, some sort of tracking mechanism for um, the ongoing maintenance. Is that something that is also um, happening in in this uh, in this project? Tracking maintenance of yeah, something. like they have to document like when the maintenance is done i i i don't i don't recall that um and and, and i don't think rick you're not um we don't we we just don't do that at this point in time what unfortunately an operations plan okay. <laughs> is that what she's referring to the, the, i think every everybody who comes with uh submits a maintenance plan and that should be given to the homeowner and the homeowner should follow that. We don't. I don't think there's any enforcement of that. No. And then there's a, the, the the notice on the land records that yes reference to it. Yeah. It was. It was one. I thought it was a, a good best practice, but I see that we haven't implemented that or enforced that um, across other. I, I thought this might be one of the opportunities to implement that, but aside from that, I don't, I don't have anything else that I, I think, I think they've we done do notice it. We do yeah. notice it in the land record, don't we, Rick? Mm -hmm. yeah, this gets noticed in the land record. Uh -huh. Okay, that. Okay, so, so that's true. It gets noticed in the land record. They don't, they don't send the town hall a receipt that says, "Hey, on such and such a date, I did this sort of maintenance," and and we certainly don't have a tickler file that says that says oh you know 175 is required to do maintenance as of may 1st oh we haven't they, ha they haven't submitted anything because it's may 31st so uh, we, we, there's just there, there's there's nothing like that yet i mean we would have uh you know there's been discussion upon that uh to um make sure drains are clean and things like that but that's kind of hard to uh that's very very difficult. Uh, uh, Jeremy, planning and zoning is just not staff for that at this point in time. Rick, would you agree? Um, we're working on something. Are you working on something? Mm -hmm. Okay. No. Okay, that's good. Okay, Peter. Yeah. Uh, um, in review and also particularly in light of the last uh, EPC meeting, um, I'm substantially in in favor of this application at this point. Good. Okay. Um, Rick, we need a we need a vote on this. Yes. We're yes. Honest. Okay. Let's let's take a vote. I'll I'll do. Um, I'll what what I'll do is I'll say okay. Uh, I'll say it's with Jim Millard recused. It's uh, five zero in favor. Anybody object to that? Okay. One. So it's so it's Eric, Bill, Lauren, Peter, and Carolyn. Who's making the motion? Okay, Bill, can you make a motion? Uh, motion to approve. Okay, Carolyn, thank you. Second. Yes, I second the motion to approve um, EPC forty-two twenty-one. Okay, and then we will 
Um, then, <clears throat> without objection, so moved uh, with the note that Jim Millard is recused on this. Okay. Moving on. Uh, EPC 01 2022 25 Brookside Road, R. Folly. To construct a grade level patio, create a stable a stabilized swale, install landscaping and other related features proximate to the wetlands and watercourses, special flood hazard areas, and designated con conservation easement. The property lies on the west side of Brookside Road, approximately 180 feet north of Post Road, and is identified as map number 16, lot number 66, in, the, in an R one third zone, and it is approximately 0 0.3866 acres. Rick. Sure, Mr. Mr. Chairman, the um, for those of you who have been on the on the commission for for several years, you probably have a recollection of this of this particular property. It had been a subdivision that uh, came before the EPC and um, was granted an endorsement for an approval went to the Planning and Zoning Commission, where it also gained an approval. And um, there had been an appeal of the conditions of the Planning and Zoning Commission's approval. Um, ultimately was settled and the conditions of the settlement also helped craft the way the subdivision and subsequent development um, affected this property. If you look at the plans, there um, this is one of the two homes that was constructed um, in an area that is generally bordered by uh, the Post Road, um, to the South and Brookside Road um, uh, to the east. Um, it's characterized, it has a reach of the Good Wives River um, to the extreme western portions of the site. There are inland wetlands that not only form a fringe, but also sneak up into the what was historically the uh, rear yards of the home that was on the property. In fact, there's portions of the historic home that was on this site that remained and were improved upon um, through the various permitting processes. There is special flood hazard areas that affect a substantial portion of the site. And as a result of those elements that that crafted the property, uh, a conservation easement was overlaid on the rear 50 feet or so of the site and included the Good Wives River and the adjoining, adjoining spaces. Also part of, of, those, um, of those, those elements that shaped the property, um, additional open space was added to the inside of a demarcation feature, which was a fence that was again also required. There was requirement for pinning and posting of the open space. And um, there was also um, some conservation landscaping that was applied to the site as well. The, um, the property drains high to low from Brookside Drive to the, to the river. Um, and again, with all those elements in there, um, it is a it is a, a site where you basically have the developed uplands to the to the east, and then you have some rear lawn spaces, and then the conservation easements, the fence, which is the demarcate, which is a demarcation feature, the fringe wetland areas, and the river, and again on the west hand side along with the conservation easement. The uh, applicant under this permit application is seeking to do a couple things. They are seeking to build a, uh, a, um, a um, patio along the rear face or the western face of, of the dwelling. And that patio encroaches within three feet of the wetland that was originally flagged, 13 feet of the conservation easement and 40 feet to the, to the river. It's going to occupy about 400 square feet of, of area to give uh, the individuals living there some space to uh, enjoy the rear yard. Um, to offset some of the impacts and to provide some privacy and to improve also display some manicured lawn <clears throat> and provide some effective screening. A planting plan has been offered as well. Some of the plants along the foundation base, some along the northern and southern perimeter of the site and uh, uh, plantings in other select portions of the site as well. The 
other element is during last year's intense storms, a, um, uh, the river jumped out of the channel in, um, in storms of magnitude and has kind of etched a, a small, smaller channel through the back edges of the back, the rear of the property. And the applicant seeks the board's permission to stabilize that channel, not to fill it, not to uh, alter it in any significant way, for, but way, shape, or form, but to stabilize it um, uh, in one of three minutes. Originally, it was a rip wrapped, you know, adding some some river stone to it, and uh, the applicant uh, uh, heard the. Um, the commission's request during you know, in the initial phases of this review that consider some alternatives that would um, maybe soften that as well. So what you have before you this evening is a, um, a series of plans. Things that remain static are the, the location and the, uh, the extent of the, the very small, you know, the, the extent of the, the patio surface. Um, the, the, the landscaping around the dwelling a little bit there. Um, but the applicant has offered three different scenarios for the landscaping of um, that channel, eliminating the river rock essentially and coming back with um, there's three, three different planting schemes that range from basically restoring grasses um, and maybe adding a rock or two to an actual planting scheme that involves woody shrubs. Um, it's important to note that because there's an absence of real grade change here, um, and it's been evaluated both by staff and by DPW staff, there's, uh, there will be no impact on the riverine hydraulics or the storage volume, which you typically look at in these kinds of scenarios because of the absence of the grade change. Drainage impacts are unlikely because of the de minimis increase in the hardscape. And um, is it in the in the in the depth between the hardscape and the river, and it will drain to the river? Um, there didn't seem to be any special concerns, as outlined by the the city engineer. Plus <coughs> potential drainage impacts. Plus, I believe it's an open jointed um, bluestone patio kind of scenario or paver patio. Um, water quality controls during the construction. Um, they have a, a basic sediment erosion control plan to protect water quality and resources during the actual construction itself. They've defined a, a route of access, which would be along the, um, the northern perimeter of the site. Most of the work will be accomplished by hand or by a small, you know, a, a micro excavator. Um, and again, there's been a, a good great deal of thought of the, on, in, the in the landscaping um, to improve the overall conservation values of the site. The last thing I want to say is I, 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 I had the, um, the landscape designer go make an extra trip out to the site and evaluate the landscaping that was done as part of the subdivision. <clears throat> and they have supplied information to show that um, a vast majority, I think only one was missing, of those plantings still remain and remain viable. And those, those plantings were concentrated within the the conservation uh, zone itself. They've also committed to repin and repost the limits of the conservation easement. Um, and uh, you know, I'll rely on the commission and their questions. And Barbara Wilson is here tonight um, to uh, with on the application. Uh, OK. <clears throat> so uh, Barbara, I guess you're representing the applicant? Yes, I am. I'm a landscape architect out of New Canaan. Okay. Uh, would you like to add to uh, Rick's Rick's comments? Yeah, I was. Um, we did come up with three alternative designs for sort of uh, filling in the scoured area in the back conservation area. Um, I I don't know if anybody or everybody in the commission got a chance to get there, but I have some pictures I'd like to just share. So then we can talk about what plantings we were proposing to put in. Um, and can I share my screen to just show a quick picture? Yes, you're now the presenter. Right. Oops. Can you see the, uh, sorry, I can't see what you're seeing.
Can you see uh, pictures of the river in the backyard? Mm -hmm. Yes. So this was taken on Monday and that very small uh, rainstorm that we had. And you can see here that this is the conservation easement line is approximately where my um, hand is going. And you can see how the water is coming from this corner under the fence. And this is where all the scour is. You can actually see the silt. And then it spreads out as you go further downstream. So here you can see it. It basically fills mm -hmm. up uh, most of the backyard. Um, so I'd like to, um, so what, hap what we're concerned about is trying to plant this area where this was actually from last October. So it has had gotten significantly deeper and wider where the dirt has washed away and the soils washed away and we're down to sort of river rocks. So let me, um, how do I stop you? Can I stop sharing? Can you help me with that? One moment. Thank you. Or would you like me to show you the plans on the screen while I'm talking about them? Would that be helpful to the commission? Sure. Why don't you do that, Barbara? Okay. So this this is the plan um, which has the most um, diversity of plants. We have some shrubs, which are these dark green uh, blobs, and then we actually have some perennials and sedges. Um, in this plan so that you would actually have also some small trees. So this would give you a, a pretty significant uh, type of vegetation that would be there. Nothing like that exists there now. Um, there were some um, arborvitaes that were put in but have since been washed away by these storms. Um, our concern is um, how to keep them stable until the roots settle and get them established. We are proposing that we could use these root anchors that we are going to be using down here on these larger trees in that section. Um, so this is a good opportunity to get a good diversity of planting materials here. So trees, small shrubs, and then some sedges. This is another option which has sort of a little bit less of the larger woody material trying to add some boulders to try to maybe get the water to not just create a, a, a ditch or sweat, you know, a, a roaded area in one place, but to have the water sort of move around a little bit and then establish some sedges and grasses and iris uh, that are uh, water tolerant in, this is the basically where the, it's all eroded now here. So this is another option. Um, which would probably one of these two would be more favorable. And then, of course, the one that the client might prefer is just to put the grass back in and maybe some boulders to help so it doesn't erode. But this, we just showed it because. But I'm thinking that you probably want either B or C as something that would be the most viable for what the commission would look for. And then the other plants we're not worried about, um, these, it doesn't get too wet there, but we are going to put the anchors in. These are native trees um, and evergreens, so a combination of, uh, and then some sedges and some um, camassia, so some wet uh, bulbs that would help with the diversity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so stop sharing screen. So any questions for me? Let's go around to the commission members, uh, Jim Millard. turn my mic on thank you uh, thank you miss Wilson I thought the package that was circulated by the applicant was extremely uh, read readable and thorough and I defer to Mrs. Wilson's expertise in helping the applicant choose whatever might be appropriate in that clearly very wet corridor in during storm conditions but I I'm in support of what I'm seeing Bill Wright? Yeah, that uh, that river rips through there. And uh, I think your constant trying to make lawn in that section is just a waste. And it's going to send everything down river, erode it. Uh, my feeling is that 
15 feet back from where it is now ought to be left no lawn, put any kind of uh, rock enforcement you think you need in there, plant what you can, but any grass in there, that side's eventually gonna head downstream. It's, it's just, it's blasting down there all the time. The two times I've been there, it eroded in different places each time. So my sense is pull that fence back 15 feet, let that go natural, put some rocks in there to try to prevent the gouging, but trying to keep any grass in there, I don't see it. Carolyn? Um, yeah, can I just ask um, what size are the, the rocks that are shown on these maps? So there, currently there are some large boulders in um, the, along the edge of the Goodwives uh, River that are outside the fence, so between the river and the fence now, and they are about uh, knee high around. Uh, that are there, and it looks like they were placed as part of the mitigation from the previous permit. So there are some there now. They're between the uh, sycamore tree and the uh, the maple that's uh, upstream. So, so a similar size and similar look to what was there. So good good sized boulders. Um, I'm just curious. Um, I, I think I was one of the people um, the last time who um, asked about the, the river rocks and, and whether there could be something that was, um, you know, more along the lines of what we're seeing this evening. Um, I, at the time, didn't, hadn't seen the property and I, I didn't wasn't really, didn't understand the degree of scouring that, that exists there, but I do now. I have I have seen it. Um, could you just explain briefly what the original plan was with, with the river rocks? Like what did that, what type of rock was that? So we were talking about two to five inch river rounds, which are river rocks that are acquired from someplace else um, and put in that scoured area on one of the pictures I showed you. And then also following, there is one path that the water normally takes um, diagonally across the property down to the other corner of the fence. There is a high spot that is along the river where the trees are, but there's this one low spot. And so the original plan showed one long river rounds, trying to keep it so that it didn't get deeper every time oh. it rained, mm -hmm. right? Earth okay. and going down, 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 and get turned into a big ditch. Right. Plus, you have water. Um, the property slopes from Brookside, so you have water coming down that hill um, where the, the gate is to enter the backyard. Very. I mean, yes, a little bit, but most of the water, if you saw in those pictures, the yeah. The, the concern I have is, and I've talked to Rick about this, is the upstream neighbor. I was told by somebody that they, in the past, had filled their backyard several feet, so they are several feet higher. Than my mm -hmm. client's property, and and they have some mitigation uh, shrubs there, but the water now there is a slight bend in the river right at the neighbor's property immediately adjacent to us, and when the water gets high, it jumps the bank, and the bank then makes this channel mm -hmm. right toward our client's fence, and then makes that scouring section, and it's very much like a garden or like a fire hose, right? It's right there because it's channeled. Um, we we have no control of that to have this stop. Um, potentially if some kind of mitigation on the edge of that embankment there, because it is getting lower and lower with each storm, right? Because mm -hmm. it's washing away, um, would help our my client's property, but we're gonna try to do what we can to not have the, you know, the whole backyard disappear if we can. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with Bill that um, to reseed the area, um, you know, probably is is not the best uh, use of your client's uh, funds um, and it, it's just not going to last. So I, you know, I, you know, it, it is it is a difficult situation. And I guess I of the three of the of B and C. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm more inclined toward the mix of the wetland perennials and shrubs. It just seems like if you can, if they can be anchored, that they probably will provide the best um, solution. But, um, you know, I guess I, I would defer to your judgment on that. Okay. 
Lauren? Yeah, based on that picture, um, it looked like pretty much the whole yard was underwater, right? On Monday of this week. Yes, so, and in the big storm uh, last year, there was two or three feet in the whole backyard. Right, so just, all the way up to the house. Uh, all the way up into the house, yes. Is plantings and boulders the solution i mean i'd hate to see us you know say yeah go 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 forth and this is great a great solution when we know it's going to continue to to flood um i'm just concerned you know we could do all the plantings in the world and it, it seems you know that that might not solve the issue are are there other solutions that maybe we we haven't thought through yet. I'm just kind of putting it out there um, that we've seen maybe Eric or, or Rich in other cases, um, you know, where where there is this much water, um, you know, kind of more engineering type solutions. I mean, I think that's a big, I think that's a big ask here. So mm -hmm. you have, you know, at the time of subdivision, you would have hoped that that was you know some of the 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 driving factors to um you know in, in, that the the various boards and commissions would have considered when they decided to you know cut the parcel in half and and allow for a second home and again this is where the original home was but i mean um you know everybody knew at the time it was in the base floodplain of the wives river Everybody kind of knew that the, there was extensive wetlands and water courses on both parcels. They had to make both homes floodproof, have floodproof designs. So, uh, I mean, those were all factors that, you know, you, you, this homeowner bought into. And so what they're, what can be done? Um, this homeowner is trying to make the property, in my opinion, livable. They're providing some solid ground, like the patio space that they can utilize to try to enhance it by doing some planting into to the best of their ability to remedy the scour in the backyard. In all probability, what it probably really needs is a, is a comprehensive look of the entire reach of the river that affects various property owners, but you cannot reasonably expect a single property owner to address the concerns of maybe seven or eight property owners in this entire reach of the river. I mean, I think it's given the circumstances that this is a, 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 a good attempt to do what they can to make the yard uh, reasonably useful, but at the same time be considerate of the factors and the, and the resource constraints on the property itself. So um, is it gonna be a, a complete, is it gonna stop the flooding, the answer is not there's going to be no. It's, it's the active loose floodplain, the floodway of Good Wives River. Um, will it perhaps stop some erosion? Yes. Is it going to be beneficial from a screening and, and an habitat perspective? Yes. Is it uh, going to make some of it, the, this property more useful to owners? I say yes as well. Is it going to fix the problem of flooding? No, it's not. I mean, it was even considered. They built the houses to be floodproof extra home with flood vents in it and they they nice get minute. water in the yeah. homes. Lauren, anything else? No, I like C um if if we're on if we're voting on ABC. Okay. Okay. Peter. Thank you. I'm I'm gonna be very flexible, I think, in mindset on this application and uh with my perspective, I think that goes, uh, you know, particularly Commissioner Wright and Commissioner Bain's uh, perspective. This is a very tight property. It's up against a very active river. There's a lot of volume that flows through there. Um, there's a culvert that's going under, you know, a, a state road. Um, so I, I would uh, encourage uh, uh, Ms. Wilson to... Uh, uh, look at this this in terms of uh, preserving the the property uh, the, the the real estate the livable space the habitable space of uh, of the occupants and uh, not get too fancy in terms of uh, 
extending our patio areas because uh, I think no matter um, what is done here, uh, rivers are going to do what rivers do. And uh, the, the recent rainstorm we had is uh, certainly not the worst that it could have been. There was a good amount of rain, but not terrible. So um, I would uh, suggest to uh, uh, do the most that you, that you can here, but I'm going to have a very flexible mindset. So that's my perspective. You know, um, Peter, I agree with you. Uh, you know, I agree with you. Listen, I'm not a landscape architect, uh, Ms. Wilson, and you are. So I rely on your judgment, your professional judgment here to figure out the best. But I can I can tell you ever since I've, you know, uh, I've known that property for many decades and it's always flooded down there. And, it, you know, I don't see any I, I don't see, uh, you know, you're up against a tough one there. And so I, I trust your judgment. I don't like A. I like B or C. Um, and I guess that's the sense of the commission too. Um, so do you, Rick, do you want to work it out with her, with Barbara to come up with yeah, I think, uh, I, the best the solution here? I think the commission should choose is either B or C. Okay. All right. So, so you want B or C, Rick? Is that what, is that what you want to, uh... I think, I just... you know, I just wanted to ask a question, maybe again for B versus C. So, with the boulders, is it possible that they could be more beneficial than having the additional plantings, or vice versa? That was my thought. Is the boulders will help make the water divert a little bit and give the chance for the plants, possibly directly behind it, to not to be in a you know a, a fire hose situation where the water is literally hitting them. The water will be going around the boulders and sort of slowing down and changing its path. Um, I also put the smaller materials, you know, like the sedges or the irises, um, which we can't anchor in that situation. Whereas the shrubs, um, yes, eventually they probably would be the toughest to be there. It's just, can we keep them there long enough to have their exactly. roots grow and be stable and not wash away with every little storm? We will try to put the anchors on them, um, how successful that is. It's a different thing. And, and so I decided not to do a fourth plan with shrubs, trees, and boulders. But that is also a thought is, you know, we'd like to put in some boulders to help to get the water not be just in that one sort of very deep spot and have it, because you noticed in the picture, it spreads out as it goes further south mm. or further downstream. Yeah, I, I would also add, I, I'm not sure it's really fair to put the question to the uh, uh, commission as to whether it's B or C. Um, you know, in, in some ways here, uh, look, I think it's uh, a combination of bad choices. What I would like to see is maybe Ms. Wilson, if you could tell us what the applicant would prefer um, because um, you're the expert. Again, I think there's uh, an acknowledgement here that this is a, a very difficult uh, parcel. It's very close to a very active river with uh, a lot of volume. Um, and again, we have a culvert under you know, a state road, which is going to hamper the flow. So d do you have a preference on B or C? Is that something I can ask you? Sure. I'd, I'd say probably B. I think the applicant had preferred the grass, right? So, yes. so the um, <laughs> but you already said no on that, and and they understand that the grass will keep washing. We were hoping the rocks, you know, the boulders would, you know, maybe let the grass come in. They, they have small children and a dog that you know need a safe place to be, and right now it isn't very safe <laughs> in the backyard. So but if why, we were, why? Gonna, we were going to pick one of the more well planted ones, I'd say B. Why couldn't you have the option for and maximize the plantings and the boulders? We could. So if you say you like C, we could also incorporate boulders into C because that's more shrubs and trees than sedges and iris, you know, herbaceous things. All of them are, you know, wetland established plants, they're all native, so there's not necessarily pro-con that way. 
I didn't want to inundate you with four or five options, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. four or the first one you didn't like. Like I, I quite frankly like like C with boulders, but um from but that's just me. Okay. And uh, you know, I'd like to uh which which would uh, Jim, what do you think? You've been quiet. Uh, I have, but I as I think I stated earlier, my proxy is with the expert uh, Barbara Wilson to advise the to advise the applicant in a challenge site, as we all agree. And I like Peter's thought of 60 seconds ago that allow the expert to recommend and provide a solution that is, you know, the best for a very, very difficult site. I, I don't have the expertise to say I like B versus C. I'd rather see uh, Ms. Wilson, you know, do the best she can for her client. Bill? Uh, you know, I, I don't think they should be putting any improvement on that property to start with, a patio or anything. It's just ridiculous. So, but I know that we're not here for that perspective. So I'm still back to move that fence back 15 feet. There's your safety zone for your kids. Let that natural area be natural. Don't put anything in there. You can try to slow it down, but anything you plant in there, it, in between now and five years, it's downriver, and that's not fair to the people downriver either. So I'm pretty pretty tough on that one. I just think that's, you know, we're throwing money and in the right down the tube there. So sorry. Said said by a man with experience in these matters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well you see with, with boulders, that's fine. Oh, well, well, I, I, I think, I think what people are saying is, is you know, well, I'm concerned too. What Bill said is, um, can they plant something there? Because if we get a storm like you know we had twice last year, everything's going downstream. Okay, that's that's my opinion. That everything is going to go down. The, you know, uh, because the the force of the water is just too much. To you know, is two or three feet underwater. I believe that. And so, um, and could any, you know, could any fresh plant, you know, survive that sort of situation? I, I mean, I'm or not an expert, uh, uh, you know, Miss Wilson is. So I'm not sure um, if it's even worth, you know, is it even worth planting? Because we know we're going to get storms. You know, if that was not a, that wasn't even a 50 year storm, you know, on what, Sunday night, right? No. So it was nothing, you know, that was, and, and look, and look at the flooding they had. So there was what two? What was that? An inch and a half? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it was an inch and a half. So, um, but they are trying something. That's the point. No, they are trying something, and, and we've been asked to to judge something here that I'm not. I'm not sure we're actually. You know, Miss Wilson's is the licensed expert to to do this. You know, I don't think I am. And you know, Peter, Peter, Peter said so. I think Jim said so. You know, um, I, you know, we we've all had our say here. So, you know, this is a this is a hydraulic engineering concern. It's really not a planting. Yeah. You know, you really the yeah. hydraulics here. They can tell you what can withstand what. Uh, yeah. You know, after a certain amount of rain and cubic. Uh, flow and all that so i don't think that's our expertise nor hers so i i don't know what you what we're trying to do here i think what she's trying to do is to 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 uh, uh, remedy a scour hole in the property and i wouldn't think that she would propose anything that was you know was not done with a certain level of expertise and so i think what she's provided at the direction of the age of the commission was was come up with the various scenarios. If you, you want to do something that's a little more, a little less <clears throat> intensive, you go with you go with B, which are more herbaceous things with a few rocks, and she she's hopeful that during the lesser storms, less frequent, it's going to kind of meander its way through the rocks, and you know what's going to be lost is it unless it scours down deeply, those things will be there and will be back. 
it's not going to be washing away a tree or a shrub. Mm -hmm. well, I, yeah, yeah I, th I think in some ways that makes most sense to um, minimize the, you know, frankly, the amount of debris that will end up downstream um, and potentially uh, clog the river. So that's if that adds anything. One other comment is the fence, if you noticed, has been, un that's seriously poured fence, right? And it's been already eroded out in a couple of sections. So that's going to go too. That's going to get blasted right out of there and that's going downstream along with all the other debris. So, you know, that's a mistake even having it that close to the water, having that fence there. I know they had to get that as part of their settlement so they could get their lawn in there, which shouldn't be there as well. So that fence is going to be next. And you can tell already, if you looked at it closely, it's already been undermined in a couple of spots. Ms. Wilson, what do you, what your response? So I know the fence fell down in the big storm last year, but in these other storms, it does, uh, it is stable. And it has been there for what, a year and a half? Do you think it's gonna survive? The fence? Because, and, because, and, because one of those really big historic ones, it'll be there. It fell over, they just stood it back up again and re, re uh, cemented some of the bases. Actually, the bases, they just stood them back up again. Yep. Uh, because when I, you know, one of, the, one of the major issues is in these big storms is the stuff that flows downstream, okay? Um, and, you know, it's it's, you know, more amazing, even just south of you, there's something called the Good Wife Shopping Plaza, where, 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 who knows what flowed downstream from that. Yep. And, and so, you know, so no, I, I think Bill's point is well taken. They say, hey, are, you know, are we setting ourselves up for, um, you know, seeing, if, I mean, there, there was a DOT fence under the, uh, uh, where a good, or, um, uh, you know, Kings Highway South goes underneath I-95. That was, you know, the fence was, I think, a six by six, okay, with cement base, et cetera. It was lifted up and pushed, 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 and uh, pushed downstream. And uh, they still haven't replaced it. But it's, I mean, that's the strength. And, and you know, that's a six by six going down, uh, you know, onto some, onto some poor neighbor's property down there because it went down and, uh, got stopped by a bridge and did damage to the bridge. So um, I am worried about the fence. What would it take to move the fence back? To Barbara? where? Because, well, I know that that fence in that location was part of the settlement. So, and it's been there since the subdivision. Is that untouchable? I mean, I think uh, that the clients will only have 10 feet of playable space in their backyard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it, again, the more, it was a... That, it, is that fair when they bought the property with the fence being told by the developer that this was allowed, right? It was just mm -hmm. created the subdivision and this was where the fence was so there, permitted. It was a demarcation feature, that's what... Oh, it was a demarcation yeah, feature. It was a demarcation feature. Mm -hmm. That was required by these the various commissions at the time of subdivision. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm kind of stuck on this one, Rick. I'm, I'm not sure which way to go. You know, um, to sit there and say, let, let the river be the river. And, and I mean, if, if, if Ms. Wilson represents that they can hold plants there, even though we're going to get some, you know, we know we're, they're good storms we've we we've had some torrential storms in the last couple of you know in the last year if it doesn't work they try something different i mean again this is a, a good faith effort on the part of the applicant to try to do something about it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you want to write this up try to well listen we'll take a we'll take a stab at a draft here uh, write something up so that you know and it circulated among the commission members to see what uh yeah. As a resolution for next month. As a resolution for next month. Sure. sure. Thank you. I appreciate all your comments. Yeah. But I would have liked some some guidance though. Is 
Should it be more? <clears throat> should it be a combination of things? Yeah. <clears throat> I, yeah. I think that's I think that's where we're going on that one to um um Yeah, I think that's the general, you know, you know, I, you know, yeah, I, I think we have various opinions on this one, and um, and I, I think there's a consensus to say, hey, you know, let Ms. Wilson, who's the expert, come up, you know, come up with her her best version of this, and you know, I, you know, I, I like the idea of the rocks breaking breaking the flow of the the stream of the flow. The velocity, if you will, uh, you know, I like that. Uh, I'm I'm always careful about new plantings and in, in, in rivers and things like that. So um, maybe if you and Miss Wilson met to sit there and say, maybe it's a combination of, of B and C to to get the rocks in there with the with with some plantings in there to stabilize the area. Yeah. Does, is that guidance or no, or is, or is that not enough? Yeah, I think at that point, you could say, you know, some variation of C mm -hmm. with an addition of several embed, deeply embedded boulders to break yeah. to break the flow. If that's what you yeah. think is right. Yeah, but and no grass there. So well, A is out. Yeah, A is out. It's, yeah, we we I think there's universal, you know, unif uh, universal agreement on that one. So our our uh, so Barbara, is that uh, does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. I just just a quick question for Barbara. Um, wh how much would the plantings do, in your opinion, the most plantings reduce that flooding? Would it? No, it's not going to reduce the flooding. What it's going to do is try to hold and establish that the soils won't disappear, so that the land won't. So the flood disappear. would be just as bad no matter what you plant there. Yep. The, the shrubs that, that or any of the plantings aren't going to stop the water flowing there because it's coming from the immediate adjacent property to the north or upstream. So we can't stop the water coming. It's always going to come. We just have to try to keep the backyard or the conservation area, which is most of the backyard. We want to keep that there. So it just doesn't turn into a stream channel. Okay, thank you. That's my biggest fear is it'll turn into a stream channel. Anybody anybody else have anything? Okay. Let's move on to EPC 03 2022 552 Hoyt Street, Woodway Country Club Inc. to construct a raised landing, renovate driveway. Grade and implement other related improvements proximate to the wetlands and watercourses. The work is in association with a proposal to raise and structurally uh, floodproof an existing single family dwelling and associated features. The property lies along the west side of Hoyt Street, approximately 835 feet south of Barringer Road, and is identified as map number three on lot number 145. The zone is R2 and is approximately 0.8425 acres. Rick? Um, this is a resolution um, for the board's consideration. Mm -hmm. you know, extensive testimony had been, had been um, uh, received at a prior meeting. And if we're, as a reminder, the club is raising the dwelling with a very good, good, very detailed review of and uh, addressing the manner in which to raise the house. Um, and meet the flood regulations. They have addressed the issues of hydraulic impact. They've addressed flood storage. They have um, uh, water quality controls. They have uh, provided a pretty extensive list of, of mitigation ranging from <clears throat> removal of invasives. Um, they were doing extensive replanting of the space. They were removing debris. They were, they were removing pipes from the water course um, and so staff has has um, in their resolution they covered extensively what the testimony was and is offering recommended conditions of approval for the commission to decide to move forward okay so everybody got a copy of this uh, 
of this. Is there uh, any questions or comments on this draft approval? No? Anyone? No, okay. Uh, Jim, can I have a uh, motion to approve EPC 03-2022? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I make a motion for this commission to approve EPC number th number three dash twenty twenty two with respect to five fifty two Hoyt Street, the Woodway Country Club Incorporated. Bill, can I have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay. Um without objection, uh so moved. Okay. Then we go to the next one is uh, a public hearing. Uh, it's EPC 02 2022 33 Knollwood Lane. Uh, P. Mikulowski and H. Mikulowski to construct an, an in ground pool, patio fence, equipment, and walls, implement grading, install landscaping, and other related features in and approximate to wetlands and watercourses. The property lies along the north side of Knollwood Lane approximately 835 feet west of Mansfield Road, and it had, and it's identified as map number six, lot number 72, and the zone is R1, and, it, and the site is approximately 1.64 acres. We heard this one last, last time, and uh, I believe the applicant was gonna come back and uh, show, us, show us something new here. Sure, just for, uh, yep. just for housekeeping purposes. Sure. Yep. yep. Is uh, you know this was this was a was properly noticed and um, the continuance was was published and the um, as a result of the last hearing uh, date which was uh, the public hearing was on March 16th um, revisions were made in response to several uh, comments by the commission so um, the focus of of the uh, request um, had to do with, if you recall, uh, the amount of fill that was being placed in, in wetlands um, uh, outside of the immediate pool area. It also, the, the board or commission asked that they consider further alternatives in which they uh, sought to um, maintain um, one, uh, one or more of the trees that were situated in the fill area, I believe most of them were sweet gums, mm -hmm. and there was a question posed is because it was such an extensive planting plan, although there was a concern that in areas where there would be a, a rather um, what was considered to be expansive overland flow to the more native area of woodland and uh, uh, the brook, um, was the buffer sufficient to um, to adequately filter, stabilize the, so the soil, filter the runoff, and do the other functions that were intended? So in response, um, that the applicant has revised plans that uh, sought to address those. And so those were the, the major, and I know that, that uh, the major issues that were for the board's consideration. I saw that uh, Tom Nelson is here representing the, uh, the engineering piece of the, the team, Kate Rockmorton from ELS and, and others are, are present and well to answer your questions. Thank you, Rick. I'm just gonna quickly um, introduce or reintroduce the, the project. I think um, I was gonna provide a summary, but Rick hit all the points I was just gonna say. <laughs> so um, I would say that uh, the board seemed uh, at the last meeting to give uh, this team uh, some specific direction, and I believe that we've addressed all of those items. Rick highlighted those three issues, and those are the specific items that have been revised on the plans. So with that very brief um, introduction, I'm going to suggest that Tom uh, open up and review his grading plan. Hey, good evening, Tom Nelson, professional engineer with McCord Engineering. I'll share my screen real quick. Um, this is the revised site development plan uh, that was uh, submitted 
The, the major changes in response to the commission's comments at the last meeting, we did uh, reduce the amount of filling and pulled in the grading. Uh, specifically, we pulled it farther away from what's proposed to be the new uh, edge of lawn, which as you recall, will be delineated by the boulders. Uh, and we've also kind of reshaped the grading so that it uh, minimizes the amount of filling. Uh, we still sort of need to level the area uh, by the pool, but we've, we've steepened the slope just beyond the pool uh, and then created sort of a secondary terrace and then created another steep slope below that. Whereas before we had sort of a continuous slope um, throughout the backyard. Uh, so at the end of the day, we do think that the amount of fill uh, being excavated from the pool uh, will be in excess of what's proposed uh, to be filled in the backyard. We will remove that excess fill from the property. Um, the other point I did want to mention uh, is that we, uh, we have uh, reissued stormwater management calculations and uh, various other documents requested by the Department of Public Works. We do feel like we have addressed their comments in regards to controlling peak flow from the site um, and reducing uh, um, uh, connected per impervious surfaces uh, from the existing conditions. Uh, I think with that, I'll turn it over to, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> I'll turn it over to Mike Mitchell to talk about the some of the changes to the, the planting. And I'll get my screen out of here. Uh, maybe stop the share screen. Let's see. All right, good evening, everyone. Mike Mitchell, Landscape Architect. Um, so like Tom said, and Kay, I'll be very brief. Um, with Tom's revised grading for the site we were able to save one of these sweet gums over here so um you know with his his revised grading these ones that are in close proximity to the pool um we're still gonna have to remove those just because of um the tie-in for the grading that we need to make but we were able to save this one that's a little bit closer um towards towards the brook we also um like rick said we you know we're, we're, we're sort of concentrating overland flow towards towards cummings brook we were able to add uh 26 sedges 48 ferns and 21 perennial ground covers that are kind of immediately in that area that are going to be you know, receiving a lot of that overland flow. The update of that is going to reflect, you know, these added plants that are going to help stabilize the edge and are really appropriate for uh, receiving a lot of that downhill water flow on the keeping this existing tree. Anyone has any questions, happy to, uh, happy to answer them. Okay, uh, commission members, let's go uh, get your questions and comments in here. Peter? No comments at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Lauren? No, nope, none for me. Carolyn? Um, I just wanted to say that I, I, it's mentioned that over 3,100 square feet of lawn will be restored to a functional wetland, and I like that aspect of the plan. Um, I do have one question, though, um, about the drainage. Um, so um, it says that a significant portion of the roof um, will drain to um, some underground storage in the front of the property. I think it's the south side um but given given that um it's been mentioned that this is sort of a there's been an issue with the water backing up from the culvert that goes under Knollwood. um i know that the application allows for um uh you know some reinforcement around that basement door to to you know fend off the water that's backing up but why not just have all the um, drainage go to the underground um, detention system in the front yard? Why continue to have some of those pipes drain into the brook when clearly the brook is a problem? Um, sure, so the, currently, so the whole roof uh, drains right down to the brook. There's a number of different four inch pipes uh, that all discharge right to the edge of the woodlands. In the, we started our initial plan actually did have some detention in the backyard. Uh, we did 
kind of look more closely at that and and we felt like the soils in the backyard really were never going to be able to support uh any infiltration back there at the most it was sort of pulled back the water briefly during a storm event in the front yard we have much better soils and we're able to get that water into the ground the problem we have is that the only roof leaders we can catch in that front yard are those front roof leaders there's just not enough elevation on the property to bring the backyard roof leaders all the way around um so i think you know, given sort of what we're up against, I, I don't know that it is uh, is really much more we can do to catch any more roof area. Uh, we did pull back some of the roof leaders slightly where we could. Uh, we did introduce the, the small drainage system for the pool into the new wetlands area. So that should help a little bit. Uh, but overall, I, I don't think there's really an easy way to catch much more impervious than we have. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just was curious. Sure. Okay. Uh, Bill? Uh, um, no question. No I, question. I do, appreciate, I do appreciate that they uh, did those changing grade and the extra buffer down where the end of the steep grade for the lawn. I appreciate that. Yep. Jim? Uh, like like Bill Wright, Mr. Chairman, I have no comment other than to compliment the team for being sensitive to the I, the uh, issues and questions raised in earlier hearings. Uh, it looks to me like they've addressed them quite well. Okay. Uh, what I will do now is, uh, if there are no more questions or comments from the commission, I'll open it up to members of the public. Is there a member of the public that would like to speak? Again, is there a member of the public that would like to speak on this? Going twice, going three times. Member of the public that would like to speak? Okay, um, then what we'll do is, um, if there's no other questions or comments from the commission members, what we'll do is, I think, uh, close the public hearing. Motion to yeah. close the public hearing. And yep, so we'll close the public hearing. And I need a motion for that, Jim. Have a yes, motion sir. For the hearing. Yes, sir. I move that we close the public hearing for the application EPC number 02-2022 with respect to 33 Knollwood Lane. Great. Uh, Bill Wright, I have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, without objection, so moved. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Kate, Tom, you've, I, I think you did a, you know, you've really worked on this uh, and it shows. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on to approval of minutes. Uh, uh, the commission members have, the commission members have March, uh, the, the March two, um, the March two minutes for the regular meeting and public hearings. Uh, were there any questions or comments, edits that people would like to submit? Any, any commission member? Okay. Then, uh, Jim Millard, may I have a motion to approve the minutes for March 2? Yes, sir. I move that we, uh, I make a motion that we move to approve the minutes of March 2, 2022 regular meeting and public hearing. All right, may I have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Um, without objection, so moved. Moving on to March 16, special meeting and and public and public hearing. Uh, does any commission member have um, questions or comments, edits that they'd like to uh, talk about? No. Okay, uh, Jim, uh, can I have a um, motion to approve, please? Yes, sir. I make a motion to approve. The minutes of our March 16th, 2022 special meeting and public hearing. Thank you, Bill. A second? I'll second that. Okay. Uh, without objection, so moved. Moving on, there's no agent approvals. Other business. EPC 09 2017 4 Ironwood Lane, R. Stalbin, M. Stalbin, 
modification of an EPC permit number 9, 2020, uh, 2017, to allow construction of a covered porch within a close proximity to wetlands and watercourses. This lies along the north side of Ironwood Lane, approximately 460 feet east of Hamilton Lane, and is identified as map number 10, um, the lot number 36. The zone is R1, and this is approximately 2.48 acres. Rick? Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to remind the commission that um, this particular the, the application or the, the, the approval for um, a proposal to add certain additions uh, onto this house had been endorsed by the, the commission back in 2017. And integral to that was um, measures that were outlined by uh, not the consulting engineer, but the environmental consultant for uh, a series of pipes to provide relief for a drainage issue um, experienced at the basement level <clears throat> of, the, of the dwelling. Um, and with that, with that approval were conditions about use of erosion controls, and there was some um, de minimis planting along the edge of the water courses in select areas. Um, uh, and that project was initiated and has been constructed over some, some period of time. Um, the project is still not complete, but is rapidly approaching uh, completion. Uh, back in January, the applicant had requested a modification of, or had presented the staff, a modification of the original proposal to, in lieu of a wood deck that had been permitted along the rear edge of the house or the rear face of the house, that um, a, a larger covered porch would be included and uh, staff uh, in conjunction with the uh, commission had requested that um, an engineer be brought on board to evaluate uh, more explicitly um, the drainage proposal for the site. The original drainage proposal uh, was not, as a, as a note, was not designed by an engineer and there were some component pieces that had been installed during the process. And I think that um, uh, the, the owner had experienced some conditions on the property that weren't necessarily uh, positive and it was a positive thing to bring in the engineer to, to evaluate it. Um, during the boards or the commission's initial review, um, uh, the members had asked for some additional information, including the test hole data by which the uh, engineer had devised in his initial drainage mitigation scheme um, and um, some upgrades to the survey data to more accurately depict where the pipes come out and some other related information. The uh, applicant had, in response to that, had devised a plan. And uh, you will note that um, based on the deep soils test information, that a substantial greater amount of, of drainage has been proposed to assist in the mitigation of, of potentially adverse impacts, not only on this property, but on the adjoining properties and the regulated areas. Um, Portions of the older system uh, will be removed. Uh, level spreaders will be provided. And again, some infiltrators up to 24 infiltrators will be provided at the rear of the property. If, if um, constructed per the, the new plan, and I, I might add that DPW has reviewed the plan and has, in, has endorsed the findings or has confirmed the findings that the engineer has presented in the, in the design. Um, there, sh there will be no adverse impact on drainage and adjoining properties. A maintenance plan has been, has been um, provided as well. Um, should the board, should the board um, or commission determine to endorse this particular application, therefore allowing the, um, the covered porch to move forward with the construction of that covered porch, there are conditions of approval that are outlined um, in uh, this uh, this modification proposal as, as written up by staff. Um, 
I'm available for questions. I know the owner is here. Yes, and Mr. Stubbin, would you like to uh, add anything here? No, <clears throat> I think it's been summarized fairly well. Um, fortunately, the engineering that has been done to date, uh, and I'm knocking on wood, seems to have solved my basement problem. We've had uh, for years uh, water in the basement. I have not had water since this started. I have no objections to anything that the engineers and the staff have recommended. And I'd just like to move forward as quickly as I can because we've held this up for a couple of months. Okay, uh, any commission members? I'll open it up. Any commission members would like to uh, comment or have questions? Yeah, just one. And again, this is part of that. If you approved it, five years ago and now something new comes in, can we take a full picture of what's really going on environmentally? And I'm not sure if we got a good answer on that, but my concern is that it would be nice to have a buffer planning along that water course so that the, once again, the grass uh, lawn fertilizers don't end up in there and then head on downstream. Well, the original, the original plan asked for some additional plantings. And there's where six uh, summer sweet and six winterberry. We've already planted seven new uh, plantings there, one rhododendron, one mountain laurel, and five azaleas. Um, it, it, those seem to be working. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. It's been said here a couple of times as I've listened in that I don't think there's any way, shape, or form that we're going to stop the water coming onto the property. The particular water cross for most instances, takes all the water downstream. I maintain that water cross, I maintain the private road and the, under, the piping underneath, as well as the entire water cross going down Ironwood Lane to mm -hmm. um, Hamilton, all right? I've been here since 1979, it works pretty well. Uh, if in fact we need these plantings and these engineerings for me to survive in this house without a foot of water in my basement, I'll do everything I can. I've already it's not the it's we're not worried about your I'm not worried about your water situation. I'm worried about fertilizer <laughs> that comes off your lawns and it sheets and goes into that water course. That's what I'm concerned about. Well, that's been going on for many, many years, and I don't know of any damage or any complaints that's ever happened. I'm taking the same thing from the country club, all right? And people above it. I mean, we're talking about nature here if you're telling me that i shouldn't fertilize my grass that's something else i'll i'll, I'll now, take a that. we're trying to we're trying to keep the fertilizer on your grass <laughs> and not going into the city and you're right everybody has a problem with that right now and we're trying to take care of it one by one and, I, and hopefully the plantings and they'll be on both sides of the water cross will help that Good. okay that's all i have there Thank was you. a planting plan that was provided as part of the original, and I think I've, I've shared that with um, at least some of you. Um, I dug it up out of the file. It has not been implemented yet, but I'm sure that uh, if the commission sees fit, I can work with Mr. Selvin to bolster that in some select areas, and I'm sure he would be agreeable that to bolster the, the buffered edge between the water course and the developed portions of the site. Um, Thank you. Problem no problem whatsoever. Great. Thank you. Okay, great. So I, I think we have a meeting of the minds there. Um, uh, is there any other commission member that would like to speak up? Comment on this? Um, this is Lauren Rossi. I, I agree with the, the planting conversation that was, that was just had. Um, that sounds like a good plan. Um, in addition, Rick, you had mentioned the um, adjacent neighbors were partaking in in part of the in part of this or something similar. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, I'm not sure what that is. Oh, maybe maybe I misheard you. There were other neighbors in the area who were who were doing no. something similar. No, okay, okay. I just wanted to be clear with that because I didn't understand what that was. Oh, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else, any other commission member would like to speak? Okay, then we'll close that and then we'll 
You'll mm -hmm. write that one up? Yes, I mean, mm -hmm. there's, the, there's the conditions of approval. And, yes. And so we'd be voting on these conditions of approval. And uh, oh, you want us to we approve? Can add, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We're approving the modification of a permit for the, yep. the covered, the covered, uh, this with the additional drainage. And um, we should add an eighth condition of um, modified planting plan per the uh, coordination with staff. Yep. Uh, to bolster the um, the planted the native planted edge to the water course. Okay. So at this point, given that that's a an addition, should we vote on this with that addition? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, Jim Millard, may I have a motion to approve? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm pleased to make a motion for EPC application number 09-2017 uh, with respect to four Ironwood Lane. Thank you, uh, Bill Wright, may I have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, uh, with the... Uh, as reflected. Ex as reflected with what Rick just said, with those with those comments, uh, I uh, you know I think there's unanimous agreement that this should be approved. So without objection, without objection, without objection, so approved. Okay. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you, Mr. Stark. Okay. Um, EPC. There's now we have EPC 12-2017, 13 Woodland Drive, E Hertz extension of EPC 12-17 to allow construction of a new family single dwelling, drive, drainage, grading, and other related features proximate to an intermediate watercourse. The property lies along the north side of Woodland Drive, approximately 460, 460 feet west of near Water Lane, and is identified as map number 52, lot number 36. The zone is R1 half, and this is, and the site is approximately 0 0.3648 acres. Rick? Mr. Chairman, back in um, 2017, the commission, the commission approved um, a EPC application for the construction of a new single family dwelling mm -hmm. on this property, demolishing the existing one in the new single family dwelling, proximate to a, uh, an intermittent uh, water course. Um, the applicant has for a variety of reasons that they cite in their correspondence, did not move forward with the with the uh, construction, but requests an extension of time to now um, assemble the, the pieces to move forward with, with the project. And um, I can report that staff has visited the site and the conditions on the property have not uh, changed in any substantial manner as to warrant a reevaluation of the site. And, would certainly endorse uh, on the, um, an extension for what seems to be the um, the standard of two years uh, to uh, May second, twenty twenty four. So you're suggesting a two year extension? Yes. Okay, I don't have a problem on that. Um, any any questions or comments on that? Is there is that enough time? As long as we're here working on this, <clears throat> is that enough time for them, Rick? To are we? Are we at risk of anything if we added three years? I'm just throwing that out for discussion. Well, I mean, it can be a full 10 years. So the five years that they had, it could be extended for another five years for the statute. But the prior recommendations were for that the commission has come up with was been for two years. And don't forget, after, as you approach to the second, they can come back for another approve, um, another extension. Of of course. Uh, well, what we want to do is, is, you know, get them to do whatever they're going to do. Okay. And so that was, we had this discussion that said, hey, we used to give out five years. When I started, mm -hmm. we used to give out an automatic five as, as a renewal. And then I, I think the commission's thinking was, hey, let's give them two and they can come back. And because hopefully that'll, that'll light some fire under them to get going. And, and complete the project. So um, that, that was the, anybody else have any comments or questions? Okay. Um, we need a motion. Rick? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, okay. Tim. Yeah. 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to put forth a motion for EPC number 12-2017 with respect to 13 Woodland Drive in accordance with our conversation just now. Bill, may I have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, without objection, so moved, an extension of two years. Okay, um, the next item on the agenda is adjourned. I just want to let, let you know that um, we have a meeting May 4, which is two weeks. And so um, uh, we have the honor of being the only commission that has not started meeting live in, 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 in person. And so um, I'm not sure that's, that's an honor. Um, but I would like, if possible, to make the meeting May 4 live. Okay, live will you know meet meet on on the second floor of town hall here, and uh, you know if you could if you know hey, there's always extenuating things that that happen and I understand that, but you know I think you know the uh, uh, the conditions of of the COVID virus now are down significantly, and and you know so it, and the other and. Every other, literally every other commission is meeting live, the commission and board. So um, I'd like to follow their lead if that's possible. So if the commission members could, you know, put, you know, could consider that and, hey, we'll see, we'll see each other live on May 4th, if that's, if, if that's good. Okay. Um, other than that, um, hey, Jim, you want to make a motion to adjourn, please? Yes, sir. I'm pleased to make a motion to adjourn tonight's Environmental Protection Commission special meeting and continued public hearing. Bill, may I have a second? I'll second that motion. Appreciate it. Uh, with, without objection, so moved. Thank you very much for <laughs> making time for this special meeting, everyone. Thank Appreciate you all. It. Okay, good night. Thank you, Rick.